Hey guys, Martin Uze here. Uh, I have a deck deck video for you today. It's about the deck I'm going to be playing in Las Vegas at the Mythic Championship 3. That starts in a couple days. I believe it starts on Friday the 21st. So it is Esper Planeswalkers. And this is the version that I'm playing. Usually Esper that we were used to from the, from the previous season was mostly built around cards like Absorb and Chemistry's Inside and it tried to play everything at instant speed and counter all, all your opponent's stuff and then take control of the game with, with Big Teferi and just, just eventually win with that. Most of that changed because Teferi Time Reveler. That means that counter spells are not very good right now. It means that you can play, your opponents can play instants in your turn basically, so counter spells are, are, are effectively useless. And a lot of decks play the fairy right now. So the deck turned into more of a mid-range deck, more of a tap out kind of strategy. One of the one of the versions plays Hero of Precinct One. It plays Hero of, Hero of Precinct One, it plays cards like sometimes plays Elite Guard Mage, it plays a, a bunch of Basilica Bellhounds. Uh you play your removal is Styron Scorn, for example, which is good against some decks, but what we thought was that right now your removal spells should should uh, be able to get rid of cards like Crackling Drake or Null Height Ferox. And that's why we put Cast down in, in the deck instead. Once you start doing that and you start taking out the, the multicolored cards, then here then Hero of Precinct One does not does not get you as much value. Like if you're not getting the one 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 tokens, then uh, it's not as exciting. And once we started started doing that, we figured out that Hero also gets boarded out in a lot of matchups. It's really good in in, in the mirror because you would you would rather have Hero than all the Wrath effects. You would rather be proactive, but it gets boarded out a lot. And like once we started casting, uh, changing cards like Cast Down, and stuff like that, we figured out that we we might as well just just play a full control deck. So the way this deck works is that you start by by something like Thought Erasure, you you try to disrupt their game their game plan, take some of the hard to answer cards like Experimental Frenzy. Uh, then you try to get some value with with your Planeswalkers, like Narset finds you finds you Wrath or, or Removal or whatever you need. The Fairy makes sure that you don't you don't fall too far behind on the board, while also making sure that you know your opponent can counter your spells or do stuff at your at your own turn. Oath of Kaya is a good removal spell in this deck that both gains you life. You can kill something like Goblin Chain Whirler, get back some life, and then when they're attacking your Planeswalkers, which they usually need to kill, then you're gaining life back as well. It also combos really well with, with the Fairy Time Reveler, because you, you get to bounce it back to your hand, draw a card, replay it again, gain some life again, and do this all over. All of this means that you're just trying to stay alive, and then eventually cast uh, Big Command the Dread Horde. Steal all of the stuff that that you killed with your removal spells, and you know win the game with Planeswalkers. The other the other way this deck usually wins is with the Fairy Hero of Dominaria and in combination with the other spell. If your opponent has a bunch of Planeswalkers, or even if you do have some that you don't mind uh, getting rid of, you just play the Fairy, use Elder spell, kill some Planeswalkers, put a bunch of counters on the Fairy, make him eight or more loyalty, and activate the ultimate ability that gets you an emblem which says every time you draw a card you get to exile anything. The way the deck works is that one of the most important cards is Search for Ascanta. Like Search has always been a good card but people used to play Mortify a lot. Now if you look at the decks people people started playing uh, Oath of Kaya instead and more of the spot removal instead. So now Search is basically unkillable. There's not a lot of ways to actually get rid of it. Obviously the the red aggressive decks or or you know white weenie decks, they don't really have anything besides maybe Conclave Tribunal, which you already have a lot of other targets for. You can get rid of it in the mirror by bouncing it to your hand with with a little Teferi and then discarding it with, with Thought Erasure. That's one of the ways. Or you can use Big Teferi to put it back into your deck. Although it's just three cards deep so you can eventually find it anyway. The reason why there's so many one-offs, like one Elder Spell, one Dovin's Veto, one D Spark, one Craft Carnarium, is that with Narset and with Search for Ascanta, you actually dig pretty deep into your deck and you end up seeing a lot of the cards 
because the games go long, you end up seeing you know cards from at least half of your deck most of the games. So all the one all the one offs are super important. Craft Carnarium is really important against the white weenie decks. It's good against red. It's your most important card against Is It Phoenix, where the game usually goes super long. They have phoenixes, they keep bringing them back, and you need the the exile effects to get rid of them for good. The one elder spell is obviously for the mirror matches. Sometimes you kill something like Chandra Fire Artisan. You kill you kill something like Nissa that checks the world. Uh, Dovin's Veto is mostly for the mirror matches or Command the Dread Horde decks, where you need to be able to cast to to counter the big Command the, the Dread Horde, which is probably the most important card in these in these matchups. D Spark is just a good is just a good removal spell right now. It gets rid of Experimental Frenzy, Chandra Nissa, Arc Light Phoenix. So many different cards, Teferi Hero of Dominaria. It's just it's just an important piece of removal spell to have have access to in your deck. The rest of the decks, the rest of the deck is pretty pretty easy. It's just basically a lot of removal spells. Cast down, as I said, much better right now than Tyrant Scorn because you need to be able to kill Crackling Drake. You need to be able to kill Null Hide Ferox, you know, Goblin Chain Whirler, Steam King, stuff like that. A bunch of cards like Wrath, there's still two Basilica Bellhound. Most of the creatures are gone, but Bell Bellhound stayed. Normally, you don't want to you don't want to play creatures in this kind of deck because you don't want to give your opponent uh, a chance to use their otherwise useless removal spells. But Bellhound always at least trades with one card from their hand. Plus, it's important that it gains you life against the aggressive decks, and you can you can sometimes bounce it back to your hand with 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 the Thera, replay it again, gain some more life. The reason why we chose to play this over the version with Hero is that the meta game we expected was we expected mostly uh, band ram decks, red aggressive decks, mono red, gruel mid range, you know, white weenie decks, is it Phoenix? And against all these decks, I would much rather have all this removal. I would much rather have access to Cry of Coronarium, you know, Basilica Bellhound, and rather not have <clears throat> not have the hero. This is what the meta game ended up being. That you can you can find this on the mtgesports.com website, and it turns out that we were mostly right. There is there is basically forty percent of Esper decks, out of which two thirds are Esper control, so similar to what I'm playing, I'm assuming, and about one third of Esper hero. And then if you look at the next five decks, it's is it Phoenix Bantram, White Aggro decks. Red aggro, Gruel mid range. All of these should be good matchups for this deck. So hopefully, hopefully we made the right choice. Even though we're slightly, we're slightly disadvantaged in the mirror because you would much rather have the, the heroes and you know be able to apply pressure than, than have all the all the wrath in your hand. Uh, sideboarding with this deck is fairly simple. There's there's usually cards that. Are not good in the matchup. Like imagine you're playing against the the red aggressive decks. Like Elder Spell is usually pretty bad because they only they only have like two Chandras. Command the Dread Horde is is not great because they they apply a lot of pressure on your life total, and you just switch that for you know the cards like Lara Dawnbringer. Oh yeah, let let me let me take a look at the sideboard right now. So you have cards like Duress and Elder Spell, Dovin's Veto. Like these cards are for the for the control mirror matches where. It's 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 a it's a control battle. You you want to discard, you want to discard the cards like the fairy and command the red heart from their hand. You wanna you wanna be able to stop them from resolving the, the command and elder spell obviously gives you, gives you like this one big card that no matter how many planeswalkers in play they have, you can just always always clear their board. Uh, Craft Carnarium again for the for the decks like is it Phoenix or White Weenie even 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 Mono Red. Ixaline binding also also mostly against the aggressive decks is good against something like Gruul. You know you can you can permanently get rid of something like uh, Gruul Spellbreaker or or Charging Monstrosaur or or Hellkite or something like that. Nightwell Predator is mostly just for the mirror. It's a it's a card that basically can be interacted with outside of Kaya's Wrath. In the mirror, it's good at pressuring Planeswalkers and and Hopefully, hopefully it's gonna be good for us in the tournament. D Spark, as I said, important for the for the matchups like is it Phoenix to get rid of 
Arclight Phoenix, get, over, get rid of Experimental Frenzy, Planeswalkers like Chandra and Nissa, and obviously Lyra, great against the Red, red Aggressive decks as well. Against Gruul, you know, Boros Feather, Mono Red, Mono White, all these decks. Yeah, and sideboarding is pretty simple. Uh, Elder Spell, Command the Dread Horde, like these kind of cards come out against the Red Aggressive decks where you don't have time to set up a big command because they pressure your life total and you re you replace it with cards like, you know, more removal spell and, and cards like Lyra. In the, in the control matches, you you obviously take out some of the Wrath effects, some of the removal spells, and you replace it with cards like du Duress, Dovin's Veto, and, and the, the other spell. Uh, I can't reveal all my secrets yet because I'm going to be playing in the tournament, but you guys can check channelfireball.com later in the week if you're looking for a full sideboard guide and everything. More stuff about the deck, you're going to find it in an article in an article there. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later.